morning, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I'm Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you coming in from around the United States and all around the world. Tonight, we're going to be playing with some layering stencils, and I have such a passion for layering stencils. I, I can't even tell you how much I enjoy them. I did a five-minute card video using this layering stencil set, but those videos are so short, and I have to cram so much in in such a short time that I thought tonight we could do a couple more cards using this fun new stencil set. Now this is the Delightful Bloom stencil and it's part of the Autumn Splendor kit. And I do want you to know we're getting a little low on the kit. So if anybody's had it in mind, you know, don't wait too much longer because that kit will probably sell out soon. And it's such a great deal. Once those products go in, they're usually somewhere around $125 value and the kit is $59.95. So I just wanted to let you know, you don't have to buy it, but if you're thinking about it, it is getting a little bit low. So how is everybody? We've had crazy weather all over the country and Tom and I, we just had so much rain here in the Milwaukee area. A lot of the streets were flooded and I'll tell you, it's, but it was the perfect weather to stay in and craft. I, I don't know, it's something about like when the fall and it starts to get colder, I just, that's the time, right? You just wanna hunker down and, and craft. So before we get started, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Hello. How are you? Hey, I'm better than horrible. <laughs> Well, that's all we can ask for. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you have a good day? I did, yeah. I heard that you were on the phone for an hour and a half with the IRS. You did, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My friends. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. It's just, uh, yeah. No, we were just, he just needed to do something with an account number. And he was on the phone for an hour and a half. And they finally picked up and then they got disconnected. <laughs> that... That is because Mercury is in retrograde. So if communication issues are acting up, your computer's acting up, you're fighting with people, it's all Mercury. So just zip it and craft and you'll be fine, right? Fruit salad. Fruit salad. Fruit salad is the way. Oh my goodness. Well, uh, Tom, you, you're coming back though with a word of the day, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. Good work on that yeah. in the dead space. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> okay. So tonight we are going to work on this stencil. So let's take a look at it. We'll go to the overhead here. So this is the Delightful Bloom stencil. This is the stencil set that comes in the kit. And this is our first four-piece stencil set. We've done We've done two-piece layering, three-piece layering. This one is a four-piece layering stencil. And you just get more and more depth the more layers that you have. My daughter, Alicia, designed this. She added all these beautiful layers in here. And I always love to see how it comes to life when we uh, get that ink blending going. So these stencils are very, very easy to line up. And I love a stencil that's easy to line up. You can just see it right through the stencil. And that's what makes it nice. If you line them all up by just kind of lining them up this way, they line up perfectly. I don't know if you can see that a little bit. Maybe I can shine my, let me see if I can shine my flashlight under here. Let me get my phone and you can see how they all line up perfectly. If you kind of Put them all together. Can you see how they line up? Mm, I don't know that that shows. Yeah, you can see that they line up perfectly. Yes, they do. But, um, oh my goodness, I pushed the wrong button. Now something screen mirroring. I don't know what I did. But what's nice about these is because it's a big, bold image, you can pretty much do this anywhere. You don't have to worry about doing it inside the misty or having like a some kind of corner here set up to line them all up. So in my original video that I did, my five minute card video, I just did this card straight away the way it's kind of laid out here. And I'm gonna do that for my first card. But because we're doing layering stencils and they're so fast and easy, I think I'm going to make more than one card. And I want to show you how you can use this to make it look like a completely different layout. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to take a tiny little bit of washi tape. 
So let me get this washi tape here. You can use pixie tape too. I don't know where my pixie tape went. I keep looking for it, but I keep looking for it five minutes before I go on and I need to plan a little better. All right, so I just, I'm just gonna take this washi tape and I'm gonna put a tiny little bit up here and I'm gonna put a tiny little bit down here just to hold the cardstock in place. And I wanna make sure that that's not gonna get in the way of any of my designs and I don't believe that it will. Okay, now for colors, I was thinking maybe we should use the new colors that were in the kit. We've got the orchids and we also have the lilacs. So I thought it would be fun to do that. Now I do want to show you a pretty combination of reds that's really nice for fall. Tomato soup, red hot, and faded brick. They're a beautiful red, fall red combination. Um, and I also did an, a combination with sweet mango and tomato soup um, in my five minute card video. So if you wanna look at that one, go ahead. But I'm gonna start with the lilacs. I see a few of you saying lilacs, lilacs. So let's start with the lilacs. So I'm gonna get this blending brush. Now this blending brush has my purple all over it here. And I really wanna clean the brush because I don't wanna transfer much of this purple. So I have one blending brush for each color family. And what I mean by that is one for reds, one for oranges, one for yellows, so forth and so on. So obviously when I'm using a dark purple and I wanna to go to a real light purple, I have to clean the brush. I don't particularly care for washing blending brushes. And the reason why is because the head of this brush is glued into this casing. And every time you wet this part of the brush, it can loosen the glue a little bit. So I prefer just to take a rough paper towel and just rub as much of that color off as possible. So it might take a little bit, but I'm using a rough paper towel, you know, something that has lots of texture. And I'm just rubbing this color off, just getting rid of all of this purple. And because we're just blending more purples, if there's a little bit on here, it's not gonna be the end of the world. It's not gonna ruin my, um, my ink or anything like that. But I just wanna really get as much off as I can. So Linda wants to know, what is the dead space? What is the, well, Tom, that's a question for you. Well, I was thinking about, I, I don't remember how it started. <laughs> you need to be on the screen though, if you're going to tell them. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think the way it started was you're way over there in the corner and you said something. And um, before I had a microphone. Before you had a microphone. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I think I was supposed to kind of fill in the gaps where there was like dead space, like quiet. Yes. But I don't think that's happened yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I'm still on standby here. So Tom is just back there in the corner in the dead space. So we call it the dead space. We're just being funny. He's not that far away from me, but he is kind of like, I can't see him from where I am because I have lights. So that's why I like him to be on screen because I can see him in my monitor. He's living in the dead space back there. And watch, here goes the fade to the dead space. <laughs> Fading back to the dead space. I love it. Okay, so I think I've got this fairly clean. We'll see. So I'm going to start with some of this um, light lilac. And I'm going to ink up my blending brush. And I am using ink cubes for this. I have a little surprise though. The ink pads came in. We've got ink pads and we've got re-inkers coming really soon. So stay tuned for that. All right, so I'm just inking up my blending brush here. And now I'm going to just do a very light hand with this. And you can see I've got one flower kind of off and that's okay. You know, this, if you wanted to do a five by seven card, this stencil will fit on the whole five by seven, but you can always just go off the edge when you're doing a two cards or mini slim lines, whatever you, you want to work on. Okay. So I am putting this light lilac in here. Oh, I love the blueness of this purple. If that makes sense. It's got that blue tint to it. I know this looks really light. You can really kind of see the color there glowing on my brush. 
It's a beautiful color. It's a very dusty purple. And we didn't have a dusty light purple like this in our collection. It's a little harder with the ink cubes. That's why I'm just re-inking a little bit. It's not really harder. It's just, you know, when you've got a big surface of ink pad to rub over, it's easy to ink up the brush more quickly. But this, you know, you got to <laughs> kind of rub it this way. <laughs> I always start from light to dark, Lori. That's the way our layering stencils are designed. So the biggest areas are going to be light. And then you're able to see where to add the next darker color because you already have that color down and the outline is there for you. So you always want to go light, lightest to darkest with the Gina K layering stencils. Okay. Oh, that's such a beautiful purple. I admit I'm smitten with purple. I don't use it enough because, you know, I, I tend to go with a lot of turquoise. I know you didn't notice that, right? Okay. So you can see I'm not putting pressure on the head of this either. I'm just holding it around the neck of the brush. All right. So now we've got that first color on there. So I'm just going to peel this off and you can see how pretty that is. It's just so light and pretty. Okay. Now, if you want to clean your stencils as you go, you can use something like a tidy towel for that. Let me get my tidy towel out of here. Or you can throw them in a little bit of water and then just, you know, like a little bowl of water and then you can just clean them you know, wipe them dry at the end. But here's my little tip in case you're new and you haven't seen this before, or maybe you don't remember because I forget things all the time. See how this stencil has these delicate areas here that are very easy to bend. So when you're cleaning your stencil, you want to clean toward those areas. You don't want to pull back on those areas because they'll catch on your paper towels or on your tidy towel or rag or whatever you're using. You want to wipe in the direction of those so that keeps them nice and flat. Just something to think about. It's easy to forget and you start to rub and you're like, oh no, I forgot. And then they bend. Now, if they do bend, don't worry, just bend them back into place. But you know, it's better if you don't bend them. Okay. So the kit is in the what's new category. And you do have to scroll down a little bit because the what's new category puts everything in alphabetical order. It should still be on page one though. Now you can see how easy this is to line up because you've got some of these lines in here and you just have to kind of finagle it a little bit until everything looks like it lines up properly. Here we go, that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna use our second purple. So that's the medium lilac. I'm not gonna clean my brush. There's no need to clean my brush at this point, right? Cause I'm going to the next darker color. It's not going to ruin my ink cube. And I'm going to rub this next dark color, this medium lilac, all over my blending brush. Okay. So now I'm going to add this color in. I'm giving it a little bit heavier of a hand. Get a little more color on there. Yeah, I just use water, um, but sometimes I use, um, to clean my tidy towel, I just use water, but sometimes I just throw it in the laundry and I put a little Tide in there and I do it on hot water. But I have like four or five tidy towels. I like to have a lot of tidy towels going at one time. So, you know, I just throw them in on a very, very low wash cycle it only get it's like that much water at the bottom of my uh, washing machine. And I do that every once in a while. It makes them smell really fresh, which I love. And it really does clean them better than I can in the sink. But you can definitely clean them in the sink. Okay, so now we've got that second color on there. I think I just love layering stencils because it makes you look so much like an artist without really being an artist. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love that. I love how a little bit, because I wasn't perfectly centered, which is fine, a little bit of that darker purple just got right on the edge. It's so fun. 
Okay, so we'll clean this one next. And again, we've got those little delicate areas there. So we're gonna make sure that we wipe away from those and that's all cleaned up. Okay, so now we're gonna go to our next stencil, which is this one here. This one, let's see here. I just wanna kind of line up these little parts in the center there. And once I get that lined up, if the leaves aren't perfect, it doesn't matter because I'll just line up the next leaf to make them perfect, if, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna go with, um, I'm gonna go with the darkest purple in these two areas right here. I might use a little blending brush for this. You don't have to, but it's nice to have it. You can also, if you're worried about the stems, you can, you know, just put a little piece of cardstock there or something just to block it or a post-it note, but it's not too bad. And I'm using the dark lilac here. Okay, a couple of questions. Yes. Are there going to be full size ink pads and reinkers for the orchid and lilac colors? There are, and I'll tell you a secret, but you guys will be the only ones to know. So don't tell anybody else. It's just us, okay? They're coming out Thursday. They're going to come to the store on Thursday. I'm so excited. And are uh, any sign of tidy towels? Uh, tidy towels. We're working on the tidy towel. We, we might change it just a little bit. So um, we're still kind of working on that. We're waiting for some samples. Some of our fabric has been hard to get for the tidy towel. So we're trying they're sending us a different fabric to test out and we want to make sure that we like it. Okay. So there I've made those two areas darker purple and I just wiped the rest off the stencil kind of away from the leaves just so it doesn't get in the way when we start doing our leaves. So now I have my green blending brush here and I'm just going to clean this off in case there's any dark on there, but there really isn't. I think that's just fine. So I'm going to use jelly bean green for my first layer. Teal tidy towels, maybe. I, I really, I've been trying to stick with the black because it doesn't show the ink, you know, and that's why I can get teal. Teal is easy to get, but I've been trying to stick with the black because there's so much ink on there. I mean, it's loaded with ink and you can't even see it. And I don't know, maybe it's just me. I kind of like that. <laughs> okay. We have another kit coming out. We're hoping for the very last week of September, but we are kind of, you know, stuck with the supply chain issues. So we're hoping that we can, can release it there. If not, it'll be postponed by a week. Okay, so I'm going to do this with the jelly bean. So get this nice and light in here. I love this. I love these beautiful leaves too. They're just so plump. <laughs> okay, so we've got the green on there. Now let's pull that off and you can see, look how pretty that looks. Okay. Yeah, it kind of makes our tidy towel a little special because it's black and that's what we're trying to stick with. We'll see, hopefully, hopefully. Maybe even a thicker black fabric. We'll see. Okay, and now here is the last layer. Now, this last layer, I'm putting over this purple and this purple right there. You see what I'm doing? I just lined that up there, and I'm making sure that it lines up okay with this, with the leaves, and it does. Looks very good. Let's just move that down just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going with a lighter purple in the center. So I'm going to go up a color. I think I'll go up to the medium lilac in the center. And that was the last color I had on this brush. So, and I'm going to use a very light hand just for the center there. I know that seems reverse because I was doing the lightest color first, but you definitely want that to glow a little bit in the center there like that. 
And then again, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to wipe that away so it doesn't get on my green. And then I'm going to go to fresh asparagus now. Alrighty, so now fresh asparagus and we're going to do the same thing. Just nice big bold strokes of that darker color. All right. Love that. And again, you see how easy that is to just rub that ink cube right over. That's my preferred method for ink cubes. Okay, so that should give us some of those details. Look at how pretty. All right, now I'm going to be very careful when I pull this off because I did put a lot of pressure on it and I don't want to tear my white. So I'm just being a little careful pulling that off. What is the name of the kit? The kit is called Autumn Splendor. So there we go. There's that. So the kit that's next is a Christmas kit. Yes, it is. And I never worry about, I know a lot of people like to do Christmas early and I get that, but I really like to take each season as it comes. And you know, if you've been with Gina K Designs for a long time, you know, most often our Christmas kits come out in October. I don't even start my Christmas cards until like Black Friday weekend. That's where I really enjoy taking that weekend off and making tons of cards. So I kind of like to take the seasons as they come. Nothing irritates me more than being, you know, having it be July and going in and seeing pumpkins everywhere. And I don't know. I like to slow down a little bit. I don't know why we're in such a rush. Now, I know that people that sell their cards and stuff, they have to get a little jump start. But um, I like to take my time. Okay, so I, um, I cut out a black layer here. And you could use Master Layouts 1 to cut this out if you want. And I'm going to just layer this together. And I think I'm going to put the whole thing on a white card base. Yeah, I'm not in that much of a hurry. I think it's fun. Like, if it's 85 degrees out, I'm, I'm not Christmas stamping yet. I'm just not... <laughs> I didn't cut this out very well. I should have cut it out with Master Layouts 1. Should I take a shot and try to trim it off? Oh, boy. Here we go. Everybody hold their breath with me. Okay, here we go. Okay, that wasn't the greatest, but at least I didn't damage the panel, the white panel. Now I think I can move it a bit. And then what some people do is especially if they're like, you know, kind of overachievers and they love to get those Christmas cards done. They get their Christmas cards done with what they got last year and then they get new stuff this year and then that's their card for next year. So, you know, some people are that far ahead. I don't, I don't know what I'm making for dinner tonight. I don't even know if we're having dinner tonight. So <laughs> I can't do that. But some people do, and I respect you guys a lot. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little. Uh, we're gonna do a little white card base here. So I pulled that paper cutter out because I want to do this tent style. Yeah, see, a lot of people start their Christmas cards for next year in January and February. Right, that's a great idea because you could just say, okay, every month I'm gonna make five. And then, you know, by the time Christmas comes around, you've got it all done. And then you can get new stuff over the next season and you can start again in January. I love that idea. Okay. So I'm going to just layer that together and then we're going to add greetings onto these at the end because I'm just daring that way, you know, because I want to do another one and I want to use the pinks this time. Okay. And so what I think we're going to do for this is we're going to cut this thanks die. And we'll do a thanks right here. And then we'll do a little greeting right here. 
can also put the thanks up here if you want. You can do it wherever you want, really. But I really like, like, thanks for everything. Thanks for being there. Thanks for all you do. Um, you could do many thanks if you wanted to put it down a little bit. You could put many, or you can just do a little strip sentiment here if you want to cut it out of black cardstock and emboss it in white. Um, but I think I'll use one of these, like, thanks for everything or thanks for being there. Thanks for all you do. I'll do something like that right at the end of these cards. But that is the purples. Isn't that pretty? Those lilacs. I love them. Okay, so now let's try something different. We'll, we'll go in a little bit of a different direction. Let me clean this first. This has stuff going in both directions. So I have to be careful when I clean it. Okay. All righty. Oh, and I didn't get the purple off either. I was messy on this one. At least that's the last step. So we have time for that. I didn't clean this either. Guys, you're not watching me. <laughs> you're not keeping track of me. Okay, so let's take another piece of cardstock. Same size. This is a three and three quarter inch by five. Okay. And now what I was thinking is we could do something like this down here at the bottom. We could also just have these two coming in from the side like this. And then we could add this one up here at the top. So let's try that. We'll do that little thing I was I did before with the with the washi tape. And I think I'm going to put it right here in the center. Like this. And let's just see how this looks. So if I start here like this, and I bring these in from this side, then I'll have room to bring that last one in over there. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Now, you're not going to see as much green this way, but that's okay. It's not a problem. All right, I do have a pink brush here. I feel like this brush is just loaded with passionate pink, <laughs> so I need to clean it. But you can see from that first one that it was loaded with wild lilac, and look how nice that light color came out. So you don't have to worry. You can clean these brushes without water. Just really just rub them on a paper towel, or maybe you have like a an old dish towel, something like that, that you can, that you could throw in the wash, you know, and then you don't have to worry about your blending brushes getting all wet. Okay. Alrighty. So we're going to start down here like this. And I'm going to start with, I'm going to go in like that. I'm going to start with the light orchid. Now, I could do it this way, too. I could come in from this side, like over here, and then I could add another flower up here. Maybe I'll do that. I'm wondering if that would be better because I tend to like to put my greeting off to this side, and that will open up some space if I have flowers coming here and one coming in this way. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Hey, we're allowed to change our minds, right? And remember, you can also have flowers going in the opposite direction just by flipping the stencil over. This stencil isn't, you don't have to use it in just one direction. However, if you do that, just remember that you have to flip them all over or they're not going to line up properly. So that's what's so, so much fun about these layering stencils is there's lots of different ways to use them. Okay, so we'll start with Light Orchid, and we'll ink this up. I'm trying to catch your comments here. Hello, everybody. I, I haven't looked up in a while, and I apologize for that. But you can see this is starting to look a, like more dusty pink on here. It's a very pale pink. This is Light Orchid. All right, here we go. So we'll get that Light Orchid on there. I also really like being um, kind of daring and courageous when it comes to colors for different seasons. Like, 
I mean, most people won't use pinks in the fall, but why not? There are gorgeous plums and stuff like that in flowers. I'm also going to do this here. And the reason I'm going to do this is because a stem is going to come off of this. So I don't want to avoid that or it's going to look weird. So I'll just do that little bit right there. You want to do everything that's touching the stencil, even if it's hanging off. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this off. And then I did get a little stuff right there because I wasn't really paying attention. But I'm going to add another one up here. Now, if that happens to you, I mean, I'm not going to remake the card for that little thing right there. I can put some gems on there. I could even go in and just mist some pink around it. But if this happens to you, all you have to do is because normally this would be off your paper, just take a post-it note and block it and then that won't happen to you again. Okay. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? All right. So I'm gonna use this flower. I'm not gonna use this one though. So I, you know, might have served me well to put another post-it note right there. We'll see. We'll see how much I messed up. <laughs> okay. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. All right, I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to clean these later. And then I'm going to go to my next stencil here, which I can't pick up. There you go. And then all you have to do is just eyeball where it should go. And it's pretty easy to see because the stencil fills in the white spots. There we go. Like that. And again, we don't want this to happen again. So we'll just pop that there. Now we're going to go to the medium orchid this time. I'm going to use that same brush. And again, I just, I don't really... Um, think it's necessary to clean the brush when you're going from the light to the dark. So I'm just rubbing this ink cube onto my blending brush. I'm glad you're here. Welcome everybody. It's great to see you. All right, so now we're going with this medium orchid and this is such a vibrant color. Oh, I love it. It's, it's so highly pigmented. It's beautiful. Okay. So let's take this off. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Okay, and we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going back. Same stencil, right? And we're just lining up those... I think that looks pretty good. We might be off a little bit. There we go. Okay, same color once again. I know the orchids are amazing. And they're very different from our other pinks. Our other pinks are more like bubblegummy, happy pinks. These are just deep. Gotta be careful over here. Okay, did I mess it up? I didn't. There we go. Okay. So now we've got that going. Now we're going to go into our um, stems. And again, we're going to do the same thing. So I'm lining this and this up. That little piece right there and this little piece right there. And then you can see what's left is where the leaves would go. And I am going to use a small blending brush because I'm going to go once again to this dark orchid. Oh, I love that color. I'm going to use a pink baby blending brush to get that color. I know these colors are amazing, aren't they? This dark orchid. Okay. Look at that. Oh, wow. I need to use these colors in some background techniques and some ink blending techniques. 
definitely. Now that's going to be very messy. So I want to find my paper towels and I just want to kind of wipe that away. Just get rid of the excess there. But that is such a beautiful deep color. Okay. We're going to do it again up here, but we're going to go to the jelly bean this time. And I am going to wipe this off because I had some fresh asparagus on there. Not much, though. So we're going back to the jelly bean. The stencil that I'm using, I saw your question. I looked up. <laughs> the, the stencil that I'm using is from the new Autumn Splendor kit. It's the four-piece Delightful Blooms stencil set. Okay, get these in here. So you're not doing much here, but it fills in this corner, which is perfect. Okay, now we're going to move it. See how fun that is? You can move these all around. I just think that that's really fun. Okay, so we'll line that up here. I think that's how it will go. All right, I don't have any green for up here. So I just need to add that little bit of orchid, that dark orchid in here. And I have no green. Okay, so now I'm going to use the last stencil and I'm gonna line these up to match those centers. And then everything else kind of lines up pretty easily. And the thing about this is if anything is off, it's not off that much that it doesn't look good. You know, it's not like, oh my gosh, I really messed that up. It's hard to mess it up because you saw what happened when I was a little off on this one. I got that little dark edge and that actually looks really pretty. Okay, so now I'm gonna pick this brush up. I'm gonna use what's on here. This is the medium orchid. That's where we left off on this one. So we'll just add that in there. And now we're going to go to the dark green, which is the fresh asparagus. I do prefer using the cube this way. Alrighty. You know, we find things as we go along, right, that work better for us. I tried that one day and I was like, that was easy. <laughs> And then we'll add that last little center. Ooh, that's pretty. And we'll add that last little center right up here. Just line it up. I don't even have to tape it down. I can go right to this brush. Just get some color in there. There we go. Okay. So now when I add my greetings onto this one, which I'm going to do, I'm going to do all my greetings now. Oops, cut and... Yeah, I'm upset about that, but I'm not super upset about it. I'm a little upset about it. <laughs> I don't know if we can make it look better by kind of going over the whole thing with a little turquoise or something, but I think I'm going to leave it because the chances of me messing it up are much greater than the chances of me making it look better. And I, I know you guys <laughs> know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we try to fix things and we make the problem a whole lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness so tom hey hey so do you have a word of the day for everybody i'm cutting this down just so you know to three and seven eighths by five and an eighth but again i really should be using master layouts one because you saw me struggling last time <laughs> yeah i could embellish that area that's true i'll put a couple sequins on there or something but I love the layout. It's so just different, right? Totally different. You can just have them do them whatever you want them to do. Okay. And let me just show you one other thing. Of course, I have to show you one other thing. Let's say you look at this and you go, you know, I wish there were some leaves in here. I just feel like it needs a little green. Just take that stencil with the leaves and just put it wherever you want. Just like that wherever you want. Get a little jelly bean. 
See, it doesn't match up. It's not lined up. You can see up here, this is where it's supposed to be, right? You can see from, from this color, it's supposed to be this way. But I'm going to just put these leaves right here. And I'm going to tape them down. And then I'm going to use that jelly bean. I know I have a little fresh asparagus on there. But... Some jelly bean. And you might feel better about this when you see it. Okay. And then we'll get that darker one. And we'll figure out how it was supposed to go. Like that. And like that. And then we'll add a little fresh asparagus on that. And that just gives a little bit. So are you, you can't see the comments. Are you on an iPhone or an iPad? Because if you are, I think you have to swipe if you're on YouTube to see the comments. Maybe even on Facebook. I'm not sure. Facebook changed something. And everybody was upset today because Facebook changed something and people couldn't like get a notification and that's really a pain in the butt you know because i know everybody wants notification so i did post the youtube link instead and so maybe you're used to being on facebook see how those little leaves just sticking in there so you can use this in other ways other than the way it was designed Well, I think I know what I'll do here. I'm just gonna fix that. And now that we have these leaves down here, I don't feel as compelled to, you know, fill in this area. So maybe I'll put my greeting over here. Okay, so now let's cut some greetings. I'm gonna cut two of these thanks dies. Well, I should put this on a card base, right? We need it on a card base. I have that other white card base. Oh, you're on Facebook and you can't see the comments. So does anybody know how to toggle the comments? There might be a little button that says live chat, or you might have to swipe, try swiping on your screen to the, to the left or to the right and see if that helps. I know I get really confused with, um, with Facebook too. I usually watch all the lives on YouTube just because it's easier for me. But we get a lot of people. I mean, we get as many people watching the videos on Facebook as we do on YouTube. So that's why I don't want to stop doing it on Facebook because I know a lot of you like it. Okay, usually swipe left. Okay, Phyllis, thank you. Okay, so now we have these. Now I'm going to cut some thanks greetings. Let me get my spellbinders machine. Okay, here we go. You can see the chat coming through on Facebook. Yeah, I don't. Do you know how to get there though, or did it just automatically happen for you? I, I try this. Try. You might just be looking at the um, at the picture. If you tap on the screen, it might take you to the live chat. Try that. See if that works. Like tap on the screen that you're watching and see if it takes you into the live chat. Somebody tell me if that works. Okay, so I'm popping out this thanks. Okay. Well, the comments are the chat, right? I think. So I could put that like right over that little mark. And then you won't really see it that much. And then I can put a greeting down here. I think I'm going to do that. Okay, that's one. Let's cut out another one. I know this stencil is way less intimidating than it looks. It looks intimidating when you see it with all the parts. But it's super easy to use. And fun. So I, when I cut my dies, I like to cut them upside down. I think they cut better upside down with less of the little stringy things. 
<laughs> no, you didn't. I started, yeah, Franny, you're right. Yeah, I started, I asked Tom for the word of the day. <laughs> Tom, I'm sorry. <laughs> Come right, back, Tom. <laughs> right back in the dead space. <laughs> <laughs> Come back and tell us, tell us the word of the day. Need okay. A, okay. Okay, a little bit of setup. So, um, has to do with coincidence. And so if you, um, and, and the, it's related to the word happenstance, right? Happenstance is when you, uh, it's just a coincidence. Something happens like, and it's usually in a good way, something good, like um, you're in your favorite store walking around and they all of a sudden just announce a sale. Oh, that's right? a good happenstance. Happenstance, yeah. Or for some, I guess, if you're on an elevator and the door's open and Brad Pitt walks in, right? <laughs> that's a good happenstance. Yeah. So that's, but on the other hand, when you, um, when it's not such a great thing, like you wait for 20 minutes in line for an apple pie that you've just been dying for and you get there and they gave the last piece to the person in front of you or you go for a job interview and you sit down right in front of the guy you just yelled at in the parking lot <laughs> that would that's not happenstance that's crap and stance <laughs> right yes yes it is <laughs> the word of the day the word of the day is crap and stance. <laughs> a lot of strange crappenings going on. <laughs> yeah, it was a crap and stance today when you were on the phone with the IRS for an hour and a half and then you got disconnected. <laughs> All right. So Thank now, <laughs> back in the dead space. <laughs> okay, so I did cut out the shadow just because I wanted to see how it looks, if that kind of separates it a little bit. Do you like the shadow or do you like it straight on there? I think I like the shadow because when, when I put this straight on, I don't know, I feel like it gets a little more lost. So I think I'm gonna use the shadow dies for this. And I don't use them all the time, but they are really nice and they do really make things kind of stand out from where they, you know, for whatever's underneath. And it's only a tiny little bit. It's just an eighth of an inch bigger, the shadow. Okay, you guys agree. All right, so I'm using the Gina K Designs Connect Glue in my little fine tip bottles here. That's a pretty good word of the day, Tom. Oh, you're playing nice music. I mean, you always play nice music. I didn't mean to sound surprised. <laughs> so I do these like one letter at a time because the, the word die can like stretch out a little bit. So if you do them one letter at a time, it's easier to line them up. Yeah, it does define it. I agree. Okay, so this one's going to go here, and then I'm going to add a little strip sentiment down there. And let's cut the next one out. Where did I put it? Oh, no. Did I drop it? Seriously, I cut it out, and now it's gone. Oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> here it is. I forgot. I was testing it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah, I like to start at one end and work my way across. I think it really does make it easier to line everything up. Okay, so we'll start at the T. It's gone into the dead space. That's right. <laughs> it went into the dead space. My, my thanks. Okay, this one's lining up really easy. This one, I just gotta scoot it over a little. There we go. Okay. And then if you get anything on there, I just take a craft pick, you know, like if there's any little bits that I need to get off. 
I just used the craft pick to do that. There we go. Okay. So this one we're going to put up here. It's going to cover this mess very nicely. You won't even see that. Love that for me and for you. And this one is going to go down here. And we could just stop with thanks. We don't need to use a word, but I could stamp many thanks here. And, I, and I, I'll stamp a word here too, right? I got 10 minutes. I got plenty of time to screw this up. <laughs> All right, so, oh, my my little mat here is still flipped around from my five-minute card video. I don't know if you guys watched my, that's, where did it go? My latest five-minute card video, I, uh, here it is. I did the wreath builder, wrong Misty. I did the wreath builder in my last five-minute card video. And when I use the wreath builder template, I always flip my little mouse pad over because you can see everything better that way. But when I'm stamping, I like to have this one this way. Okay. Alrighty. So when you're stamping, by all means, don't do what I do and stamp at the very last minute after the card's already made. <laughs> but what I like to do is I like to kind of get an idea of where I want my greeting. Like that. And let's see, let's take a look. This is very scary. How about thanks a bunch? Cause it's a bunch of flowers. Wouldn't that be cute? Thanks a bunch. Let's do that. Plus it's small, so it'll fit in that spot. It's all coming together tonight, Tom. Yeah. All right. So I know I say these same techniques a lot, but I just want to remind you that you can test this before to make sure it's straight. So once you get it in place where you want it, you can take your index sheet off the back of your stamp set and lay it right in the right spot. And then let's get an ink pad. I'll use a little ink cube here. You can ink it up and then stamp it to make sure it looks straight before you commit. That looks pretty straight to me. Thanks a bunch. Does that look straight? Yeah, it looks straight. Good enough. Better than horrible. And I'll just clean that off, put that back on my stamp set, and then now I know it's going to stamp straight. So we'll just get that little a bunch in there. Thanks a bunch. <laughs> I'm glad you're laughing. I, I am. I'm glad you're laughing because honestly, otherwise it'd be scary, right? <laughs> okay. So that looks good. And then we can get this thanks right there. We can glue that down. And this will be one card. I'm giving away two cards tonight, Tom. Alrighty. So we can use connect glue to put this down. Why not? I do have a bunch of cards on my desk again that I've got to work on. Ooh. Oh, scary. Okay, thanks. A bunch. Here we go. That's one. I think that's fun. Okay. All right, now this one we know that this has to go up here because it has to cover my goober. So let's use many. We could do with thanks. Many should be about the same size. Let's do many. Many thanks. Oh, I love this pink. Don't you guys love the pink? Okay, so we're going to put many right in here. All right, I'm going to test this and make sure it's straight. I don't know if it is or not. I got to look over. Okay, sorry for my head getting in the way. I got to do the same thing again. I'm too nervous when it comes to the very last thing you do to your card. <laughs> 
that should be the nickname for a husband that crafts with um, like once in a while jumps in and crafts with you. The goober. The <laughs> oh, here comes the goober. He wants to make a car. <laughs> or just goober. Come on, goober. You're, you're crafting tonight. Oh, gosh. <laughs> We got to get some of the, the guys out there to craft. I know we have some guy crafters that are watching. I think I saw Larry. Hey, Larry, if you're still here, he's a great crafter. Okay, there's many. And then, thanks. We'll just kind of cover up that part. You won't see any of it. And it doesn't take away from all the beautiful flowers either. I like that. Oh, yeah, that's right. There was a goober in the Andy Griffith show. Boy, that's going back a little, huh? But, you know, I remember it. It's still on. I think when we were at your mom's last time, she had it on, Tom. <laughs> really? Yeah. Hmm. All right, we'll just get that right in there. I'm just kind of centering the the many, like so that's in between. There we go. I think we did it. I think we hid the goober. We did it. Oh, we did it. There's the cards. All right, let me clean up all this, stick that on there and get it out of the way. And then we will do the push. There are our two cards. Definitely we could put some sequins on these. I think that would be fun, but not necessary. Not Look necessary. That. Spectacular. Aren't they fun? I've been dying to use these new colors and to show you guys how pretty they are and how they layer so nicely. Love it. Right. Okay. So let's give away the pink card first. That's down. Oh, Card number one, pink beauty card goes to Tracy Brown. Tracy Brown. Tracy. Yay, Tracy. Tracy. <laughs> All right. Tracy. Okay. And who gets the purple card? The purple card, or as Rena used to say in her younger years, pearl pull. Yeah, that's that was harder to say. Pearl pull. Pearl pull. Pearl pull. pearl pull. <laughs> Okay, anyway, <laughs> that card goes to Leanna Lowe. Hey, Leanna, Leanna. Lowe. congratulations. Oh. Ladies, all you have to do is send your name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com, and I will get these out to you. All right, everybody. Well, this was so much fun. I hope you enjoyed these cards. I hope you'll give these layering stencils a try. The Autumn Splendor Kit is available at GinaKDesigns.com in the What's New category. And that's where you'll find these stencils. Well, Tom and I will be back on Thursday for another crafter noon. And then I'll be back over the weekend with another five-minute card video. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you all so very much. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.